Hello and welcome to my live video. Let's see if I can get it to focus proper. I guess maybe it's just my yarn. I think it's because of the camera on YouTube live for whatever reason it wants to make it like a bowl. Do you know what that camera is called when they stretch it out? It's weird. Anyway, here we are. We are live. I think it was only a few days ago. <clears throat> Sorry about my throat. I've been drinking water and trying to clear it. And it just wasn't working, so I thought, okay, I'll just go with it. Um, yes, May 22nd. So I guess that was more than two days ago. I thought it was closer than that. <laughs> anyway, you didn't have to wait too long, but it was a while ago. I did a live video, and we got this far. Which is good enough for teaching the stitches. And I think I went through some of the important points. And then I cut the video off because my family had just gotten home. My daughter was crying because she skinned her knee and dad was taking care of it just fine. But it was very distracting. So I thought, ah, I can't just do this live video. I have to stop. So I turned it off, even though I hadn't finished the square. And I still did want to finish this square with you guys. So that is what today is about. This is what it's going to look like when it's done. Of course, we have, um, we almost reached the halfway point. I'm going to move this one out of the way. <clears throat> and... I am using purple as my main color. I brought this box because um, in the first video, it's um, because again, the way the camera uses, the tabletop was too far away. But now I'm not sure if this box is gonna make it too close. I don't know, it's all just an experiment, right? Life is an experiment. That's my words of wisdom for you today. Life is just an experiment. All right, let's see if I can make it, try to be centered-ish. They're working. And on my computer over here, I want to watch my video so that if you comment, I can see it because I don't actually notice on my phone when people are commenting. <clears throat> and you can see this is weighing it down because my tripod isn't very strong when I put the phone in. So yeah, and I don't plan my live videos. Um, someday I hope to be cool enough to do that. But for now, I just sort of take the opportunities when dad's like, okay, I'm going to take the kids to the park. And I'm like, ooh, it's quiet in here. Better make a video, right? <laughs> um, if you were watching the other video, you'll already know, or maybe you were following along. So we were at row. I count the purple boxes. This would be zero, and then the top would be two. So I just count the window. Two, four, six, eight which means our next purple row is going to be row 10. And I have to get my little pattern up here. Otherwise, I won't be able to crochet it. I have not actually memorized the pattern. I could figure it out, I suppose. If I was just, you know, staring at this, I would say, okay, I'm pretty sure that's what the pattern is saying, but I would rather read it off of <laughs> the actual pattern just because I'm usually not that on the ball with my thought processes, if that makes sense. So um, I've tried to give it a few minutes for people to join in, but I think we're ready. We are going to start right into the pattern. If you need more introduction to this, please go see the other video um, or the link. I think I put the link. No, I didn't. I will put the link in the description and you can get your own copy of this. The point of this little square, this is the full square here. The point of this is very small, but it's to teach you how to do interlocking crochet, which is locked fillet mesh, I also call it, because you can see here, these are just two layers of mesh and they get locked in the windows. So pink is always going into pink and purple is always going into purple. And it's just two layers of mesh that happen to be locked into each other. So if you need help and you want me to keep showing you the rest of the square, that's what this video is for. And we're going to start with a chain three. Always, that's how we start our main color row. And if you have the pattern, you see it says RS ACF right above this section. R RS is the right side. This is the design. This would be the wrong side when you can't see the design. And ACF, that's talking about these tails. The accent color tails need to come front because when you go to use them, they have to be on that side of the project. Otherwise, you're going to have issues. So we are going to do our first stitch right here, one in the front. We bring the whole thing to the front before we yarn over 
and finish our stitch. And we always have a chain space between double crochets. Our next two stitches, it says B2, so two stitches go in the back. And if you look at the purple here, we're always going into the double crochet spots. We are going to go behind the pink layer, but we're still going into the purple like normal from front to back, like you would do a normal double crochet. Chain space between them, double crochet. Chain space between them. Now I have made this video live, which isn't necessarily required to be live because there's not a whole lot of interaction when I'm teaching, but it saves me from editing the video later. Any mistakes I make, you're just gonna have to see them and see me do them, right? We're then going to do three in the front, one double crochet, chain space, one double crochet. Now you'll notice I'm going under the V, the normal two loops, and I'm not taking any of the pink. The two layers of mesh are locked together, not crocheted together. And they are always going into the double crochet, the top of the double crochet. The chains really get ignored. Chain between each double crochet. Then we have two in the back. It'll be these two right here. And if you watched my other video, you will know that I designed this. It's a little bit of a boring design in my opinion, <laughs> but I designed it because I wanted you to have to count the windows to make sure everything gets lined up. Then our stitch in the front. And our end stitch goes right on the side. You can find the second chain. This was chain three. One chain counts as the chain gap and then two chains counts as the double crochet. So you could find the second chain and you could put it there. It would lock things in for a tighter corner. I usually just go in the window so it does slide around if you pull on it, but I don't usually pull on my things like that, so it doesn't seem to matter to me. And you should put a stitch marker here if you think your project might get pulled apart. I am lazy, essentially. I don't really want to deal with the stitch markers. Then we move on to our accent color. That heading, the RS-ACF, that would be when you flip your work is a new heading. So because there's no new heading, we know that we're not flipping our work. We're still looking at the right side. And because we brought that accent color tail to the front, our first instruction here says chain three in front. And if we didn't move those tails in the right spot, right now it, it would be too late. If they were in the back, you'd have to take apart your row or cut your yarn because it's already locked in. And this stitch here, is always going to be inside the purple. The purple goes all the way around the outside. This is our edge stitch for the pink layer. The pink layer is one window smaller than the purple. Our next two stitches are both in the front. So we enter the stitch, make sure we're under both loops, but we make sure it stays in the front. No purple is getting locked in there. The purple only gets locked in between windows, not in between the actual stitches. And this image is a mirror image, so we're doing the same thing on this side as this side, but we'll go through all the stitches, that's okay. The next stitch is in the back. So we want to be behind this purple part here, but we still want to enter the pink one like we normally would for a, a normal double crochet. I showed it in the other video. Do I still have it here? I might have destroyed it. I'm not sure if I still have it. I made a single layer of mesh to show you, like you're just making a layer of mesh that has double crochet chain. And I do have a gauge swatch video that was supposed to be part one and I never did part two, but that's on the list. I will get around to it someday. And this is the fourth one. It's harder when they're close to the locking part. It's easier when the gaps are big, right? Chain space between all of them. Front stitch one, front stitch two, one, two. And our end stitch goes on the front, just like this end stitch. You could find the second double crochet if you wanted to. 
it will make your corners locked straighter but I usually just go in the window because I find this too fiddly to bother with and that is row 10 and 11 I have to move my little pattern here there we go we're now flipping our work you flip your work every two rows you do a main color and an accent color flip your work main color accent color we are not going to lose our loop make sure that you don't do that because I've done that a few times and it starts with that heading it says now we're looking at the R wrong side WS this is the wrong side if you look at the chart or if you look at the finished picture then you know this is the right side this is the wrong side on my patterns the bottom always has those three straight lines and the wrong side has this kind of their spikes you know and row 12 we're going to start with a chain three one two three and it tells us for every wrong side those accent teller tails have to stay on the back back referring to what you see this is now the front of what i see back is behind here and our first stitch goes behind this pink but still goes into the front of the purple like a normal double crochet i feel like i'm going really slow but i want this to be a video that you can reference if you're like i do not understand how interlocking crochet works we have two front stitches i think you can see how the front stitches they're in front of the layer of pink they're not locked into it they're just sort of hanging out now that we create another window that's when things get locked together our next three stitches are behind the layer of pink back one back two and back three so if you have any questions you need me to clarify something you can go ahead and say so i do have my little video up i can see you can see my computer there i'm watching myself i have it on mute and it's all delayed by a few seconds but i can see comments so we do front two because it's a mirror image and we know we did front two over here back one we're going behind that pink then we go you can pull the pink this way and that to get it wherever you need it to be end stitch or you just go in the window usually and I pull my tail really long so that I don't lose it. Row 13, we are now using the accent color. And because of where we put those tails, we're already in the back. It says chain three in the back. It's just a double check. You don't really have a choice right now. Your chain three is going to be in the back if you put your tails in the right spot. The chain three counts two is for the double crochet. One is for the chain space that is always between all of your double crochets. First, we have three stitches in the back. You need to also pay attention to the windows because purple goes on the outside. This one is in the first window. So your next stitch has to line up with the windows. Sometimes that's where people get kind of confused. And we're going to do three of these. One. And it's kind of hard to watch the computer my phone who is recording and my actual hands you should guys try this sometime it's real fun actually three and a chain space there we go then we have two in the front so this is where having those windows lined up properly helps because sometimes people forget and they try to go in here but that's actually already been used that double crochet is using that one so the next one is right here one, two. And I was pretty excited this week. I managed to reach monetization on YouTube, which means I'm super cool. <laughs> what it really means is that I've had enough watch hours and subscribers. So I will try to put more effort into my YouTube video and maybe make some ad revenue. Although mostly I make money from selling patterns, which is why I want you to know how to do it because then you can buy some patterns you can make whatever you like you don't have to just follow me on the video three and our end stitch for this one goes in the back so we want it to be behind this purple we can just move it out of the way 
find that corner and do it right in the window. Now we're going to flip our work again. The heading says RS, ACF. Whenever we're looking at the right side, the accent tails are coming to the front. They're going to stay here because they make this line nice and straight. Not all designers do their edges like that, so pay attention to whatever pattern. If you're using my patterns, I'm pretty sure they all do it this way. Chain three, the first stitch goes in that first window. It's going to be in the front. So you got to bring your whole stitch and keep everything in front of that pink layer. Double crochet. Then we have three back stitches. So now we're going behind the pink layer. Make sure you get the right one. This one's already been used. That's the double crochet we just did. So we have to use this one. Uh, one yarn over, we're just doing a double. Two, three. So this, these uh, stitches are all behind the pink layer. Always chain one between your stitches. Then we have one in the front. And you might have noticed if you have the written pattern, technically I could have put brackets here. It says F1 comma B3. Then I could have put a bracket that said times two because we did front one, back three, front one, back three. But because the tutorial is really trying to teach you the stitches, I didn't want to add that in and confuse people. But I do have different tutorials on how to follow brackets. And if you buy one of my patterns, you may come across brackets. And I usually teach my tutorials based on the written pattern. Some people really want to learn how to crochet from the chart. And that is a good skill. However, my charts, in order to crochet from them, I always just have to write it out. I don't have enough brain power to crochet directly from the chart. It is very slow for me. I'd rather write it out and then crochet from the written. So I will eventually get a tutorial up for you so that you can see how I get the written instructions and how you can crochet from the chart. Technically, I did show it in a video like two years ago. And people complained about it. It wasn't the best video. I mean, my skills have grown since then, so that happens. Row 15 is easy. All of these are going to be in the front. But if you still want to count to make sure you don't miss anything, you can. And you can see I usually have my finger here. That keeps me from entering the purple accidentally. It, it tells me when I've reached through the hole, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever crochet with your eyes closed? Because <laughs> I can technically crochet with my eyes closed. You just got to feel the stitches. And maybe that's how I can go faster. People sometimes ask me how I can crochet fast. So I would love to know if interlocking crochet is clicking for you. I would love to know if there is some more questions you have, something just doesn't make sense. And if you have some pattern that you're like, can you please show it in a video? You can let me know. No guarantees. I've had people asking for like two years and I didn't get around to very many videos yet. Mostly on my plan is I plan to make some more videos showing the center out technique and I plan to make some videos showing my Doctor Who squares and I was going to make some videos answering some frequently asked questions like what's the difference between interlocking crochet and mosaic crochet? Why does mosaic crochet have more names like overlay mosaic and inset mosaic that sort of thing? You can see we turned our work if you have the pattern in front of you we're on row 16. You can always count your windows. So we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, which means the next one has to be 16. We're going to do one in the back, and then the rest will be in the front until we get to that end border line again. We're keeping those three border lines straight. So you can count them if you like. We got seven. One, and 
Do. And three. And four. Oops, go in there. And five. Six. My pink is all lit tangled there. Seven. And I have been adding subtitles, all sorts of different languages to my patterns, but it won't be on the live video. I have to go back and wait for things to load and then I can add the subtitles. Back one and end stitch right on the side. So we are nearly done. This time when we, oh no, we have to finish the accent color. Oh, silly me. I was about to flip my work. That is not, I'm going so slow here. My brain's like, it should be time to flip now. I'm like, no, it's not. One, two, three. We're already in the back. Sometimes you have to pull the purple flat because it does like to curl up and then you forget what you're doing. So if you pull it flat, you'll see that the purple is always on the outside and that makes this pink stitch in the back. It's already in the back. And all of these stitches are gonna be in the back. So you can count if you like, but it is a good time to just go ahead and crochet. Plus with this one, you get a nice big flap. All the stitches are already behind there, easy to find. I am crocheting a little faster, but I hope you can still see how the stitches are working. I think by this point, if you're trying the interlocking crochet technique, you probably know how to do a double crochet, so I don't think I need to go too slow. I do want to point out when you get to the end, because we've folded all this down, that final end stitch in the corner, you want to make sure he's actually getting on this side of the purple. Okay, so it's tempting when you folded all of this down to put your final stitch right in the corner there. But actually, if you put all this back up, this post, he needs to be straight. So this is the stitch you want to get, and you want that purple one to be in between. So you, it's okay to move the purple layer out of the way when you're crocheting, as long as you make sure that the rest of the things aren't getting twisted. So now we're ready to turn, and this is the exciting turn. Because when you read the heading, normally RS says accent color front because we've been making these lines. And this one, it might have an asterisk if you have one of my older patterns. Nowadays, I've been just bolding and italicizing it because people are like, there's an asterisk, but it doesn't tell me what it means. It's just trying to remind you that this is different. We're doing the right side, but we're putting these accent color tails to the back because now we're doing this part only of the top. So we chain three, one, two, three, and our stitch goes in the front, which means we want all of it to be in front, and we want those accent teller tails to be in the back as well. Chain one, and then it's going to be in the back again, seven, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we're going to put a stitch in the front again because it's making that borderline. And the end stitch always goes right on the side. The purple one doesn't go in front or anything because it's the final end. Da -da -da -da. My pink got a little twisted. I'll just flip things around a bit. Helps that I'm on top of a box and my yarn is in the box underneath. <laughs> uh, where are you, pink? There you go. Pull. We are now behind here. So we've got chain three and back, one, two, three, 
and then all the stitches are in the back. However, each stitch has to go through its own window. Make sure that all the windows are lined up, okay? So this first window is already occupied. We go in the next window, pull everything to the back, then we do the yarn over and finish our double crochet. Chain space between them all. Yarn over because we're about to do a double crochet. Go in the next window, grab your hook spot and pull it all to the back. Um, I did split my yarn there, but it doesn't matter. Shh, don't tell anyone. Yarn over, go in the next window, grab your pink one, pull everything to the back. And you can see this layer is being locked in with the other layer now. We could go in between these flaps before. Now we can't. They've been locked together. So that is the point of these border lines, is to lock all the layers together. One window and one stitch all the way across. Now, if you were doing a scarf, this takes a long time to get across there. <laughs> But our tiny little square is not too hard. And don't forget you still have that end stitch in the corner because things are drooping. That's just because of the way we're pulling on things. Make sure you double check or count. There is still this end stitch and it is in the back and it feels wibbly wobbly. This is pretty much the only time that I do like to find those the second chain. I don't do it for every project because usually I'm too lazy. But it does make it easier to keep the boxes separate. And you can actually cut it off right now. I just do a chain. It's what it looks like. I do a chain. However, I cut it off and then I pull it all the way through. So my chain disappears, turns it into a knot. And that leaves us only, we're looking at the wrong side and we only have one row and it's with our main color. And all of the stitches are going to be in the front. So we're locking it in one more time. Make sure I'm in the camera. One, two, three. We have to go through each window, yarn over because we're going to do a double crochet, go in the window, find your purple, but bring everything to the front. Make sure you're not going around the pink and then chain one between the stitch. Yarn over. We're going to go into the purple because we're doing a double crochet, but we want everything to be to the front before we do our yarn over. Oops, I lost my thing. My tension's weird when I'm trying to show it in the video. I'm looking at the video, I'm looking at my computer. No one's commented, no one said anything, even though it says there are six or seven people watching, so that's okay, you don't have to say hello. But if you do have questions or you need me to slow down or something, I'm, I'm watching, I'm waiting. Looks good. We got a comment. Thank you, Rosalind. Uh, I wasn't sure who was watching, but now I see it's you again. You're like my best watcher. And stitch goes right on the side. You can find the chain too if you want. I don't. Now, you could cut it off here. Jen says, hello, Ashley. I just arrived and I'm just watching. Well, that's good. Um, you did catch the end of it. So if you're new to the technique, you'll want to find the beginning. But perhaps just seeing the end even does help. That is the end of it. If you wanted to cut it off, you can. Nice to be retired. Oh, Rosalind, I want to be retired, but I have three little kids. <laughs> I can't retire yet. Retired, you just get to crochet all day, every day, because that's almost what I do, except for I get kids and interrupting. <laughs> um, this one here, I put the border on, which you can sort of see. I've grabbed that white stitch and kind of keeps it together. If you don't put the border on, you do get a little bit of a flap. There are a lot of pieces that I have that I don't bother with the border because once I join it to a blanket and such, it doesn't matter. This one, well that yarn got really weird on that side, but 
normally the border just keeps everything locked in very 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 tight these layers are locked in tight you can't put your hand between the layers it is finished but if you want to do a border I'm going to show you because people get confused you can turn it back to the right side look at your project see how pretty it is and what we're going to be doing is putting two single crochets in each purple window that is the basic border it does look fine it uh, it helps make well you can see how the pink is kind of pushing the purple under it's just the nature of it right you could block it out and someone else has said hello hello Reconatoire? Reconatera? I don't know how to say that, but hopefully I haven't butchered it too bad. And it's nice to have you here. Thank you for watching. We are going to do my revised single crochet border. And it's revised because I don't know how long I had been doing regular border before I decided to add an extra step. So the regular border just puts two single crochets in the window. And then go to the next window two single crochets and it does help with making that final border stand out better and it does help push the purple bigger because the pink is kind of hiding it however I don't think it's quite enough that is why I did a revised usually chaining one just gets me a little bit more space to work with it's optional you don't really have to and what I want to do is in this corner you can see we did three chains so I'm gonna pick up this loop it's in the second chain I go in the purple window but I'm also gonna pick up a pink loop come on you and then I'm gonna do a single crochet and you can pick up for every stitch but I'm lazy so I only do every other stitch that's pretty much maybe I should change my business name <laughs> Ashley's lazy crocheting so in this next window we're gonna do two single crochets but instead of doing it just around the purple I'm going to pick up a loop of the pink you can pick up the back loop and then the second single crochet I just go into the purple window you could pick up the front loop The second single crochet I just go in the purple window my favorite thing to do is actually to pick up a loop from this post why because acrylic yarn is very stretchy and when I do my single crochet and then I go in the next one here this one it gets too gappy in my opinion I don't like that gappy you love the revise. Thank you, Rosalind. Oh, good. LOL, just call me Tara. So it's like Reckon Tara, really. Only we're going to go with Tara. I'll try to remember that. If you ever watch another video, I'll be like, hey, look, it's R Tara. <laughs> so this revised single crochet border, you can see here, it does have tiny little spikes. That's sort of, it gets a bit spiky. However, I prefer the way a tiny little spike looks over the gap. I don't like the gap. So that is your preference. Ooh, the train blanket. I love that train blanket. A little brag of myself. That one was really hard to draw. So I think that once you learn the technique, pretty much anyone can figure out how to make a pattern like this. Once you learn how to crochet it and then you learn how to use the charts, etc. That one's not too hard, but the train thing broke my brain trying to get the angles right. So I am so glad that it worked out and people like it because I was very scared and nervous before I published that one. And um, my son really likes the idea of it, but it's such a big blanket and every other big blanket I've made for him, he kind of goes, oh, that's nice, whatever. So I'm not really interested in putting the effort in. <laughs> I don't want to make it for him and he's just going to go, eh, whatever. But I love seeing it. It is a great one. If I do say so myself, right? <laughs> this this stretchy part here, if you do the same thing for every stitch, it will look on purpose and it will look finished. If you switch it up, then it starts to look wonky. That's how you get professional-ish, right? Now, there are other loops here. 
There's this one here. I've done that before too. Front loop here. That sort of thing. As long as you're consistent, you can pick any loop. This one, I'm just going to do front loop. It pulls things up, but you don't get as big of a gap because that other stitch is still back there. So it's kind of my, the one that I find easiest to find is front loop only in through the window. And I do two single crochets in each purple window. One of them picks up a loop and one of them just goes into the window itself. Jen Reeves says, kids, very unpleasant with their boldness at times. You're telling me. I got three kids. Alice is seven, Remington is five, and Melody is two, two and a half. It matters at that age, right? And they're mostly kind. I think my kids are pretty amazing, but definitely there are times when you're just like, oh, did you really just say that? Oh my and even sometimes it's not bold. I did, before I started these patterns, I was working on a single crochet graph gan, and it had like a million bobbins and tails and I started it when I was pregnant with Melody and it was designed, well, the picture I picked was for Remington, my son. And I spent a year, like I was pregnant with her and then I had her, and then she was toddling around before I finished that blanket. And he was so excited to have it and then by the time I finished it, he was like, oh, nice. And he never slept with it. It's in storage. I was like, okay, thanks. Um, now we're back at the corner. Uh, normally I've been grabbing a loop and then going into the corner. Because the corners are so flappy, I usually do into the window. And then for my second chain or second single crochet, I grab a loop and I, I just sort of make it up. You'd think that I'm really professional, but I just grab any sort of random loop and I go into the window and that's one side. To, to turn it to do the next side, I chain two. Some people prefer chaining one. I, I like the two. And then I do my first stitch in the window. I pick up a random pink loop again. As long as it's not the same pink loop that you just used, because then things stretch out too much. Little boys, hee hee, they can be so fickle. Thank you for your designs and tutorials. You're very welcome. I do love my kids, but they are fun to laugh at sometimes. <laughs> so now you can see we're on the side. These were all the chains, three chains or a double crochet at the end of the row. So it's different. The loops that we found here, they're not available here. As long as you're picking up the same loop each time, it actually doesn't really matter, right? So I usually just try to pick up a loop, go in, and then into the window. And then this kind of has like a pole here. That's the one I prefer to use in the window. And in the window. I have so many drafts drawn up in various stages. Some of the drafts are absolutely horrible. They'll never see the light of day. Some of them are nearly finished and like I'm just tweaking things here and there because you open it up and you go, oh, that part doesn't look right. Oh, that part's not right. Some of the drafts, uh, I'm bad. For a while there, I was saving drafts that don't have anything. It's literally a blank canvas <laughs> and it has a title. And I'm like, well, that's not a pattern. <laughs> But some of the drafts are nearly done and they've been nearly done for a long time and they, they get too scary and overwhelming, like Speedy Train. I think that one was in my drafts for six months or so before I decided it was ready. And I have one pattern already waiting, the dragon, and it's been eight months now and I still don't feel like he is drawn properly. There's something wrong with his claws. So I haven't finished him and that means I can't get testers to make him, which means I can't publish him. <laughs> so I'm kind of frustrated with myself at the amount of how many half done things I have going on. So again, in the corner, I usually do in the window first and then for the second stitch, I grab up something just to keep the corner locked in tighter. And this is usually the pink one I wouldn't do, but the purple one, sometimes I'll go over the tail a little bit, 
but mostly those are better to be weaved in with a needle because otherwise they'll just pop right back out right so just pick anything I don't know all you're doing is keeping the two layers very tightly locked they were locked already but this slight amount of flappiness is all we're changing because now there's no flapping Uh, where am I? Just going to do front loop for this one I decided earlier. And when you're doing your foundation chain, if you use the back bump, it leaves you with this front loop and back loop. If you've done a different kind of foundation chain, you might have to find something else here. I'm not sure your chain might look a little different. And I'm sure other designers have other ways of doing borders. I don't really have time to go spy on other designers and see what they're up to, so I don't know what they are doing, actually. Some, I suppose I could call it market research or something, but I just don't really bother. I'm too busy making my own stuff, you know what I'm saying? And there we go. So, we're almost done. The border I find a little boring because... That's why I like interlocking crochet, is that it uses my brain, it makes me count every single stitch, and I can't just sit mindlessly and watch the TV. This part, I can. Jen says, I have to run to send happy mail to a friend. Thanks for sharing your techniques. Well, thanks for watching, even if it was just for a short while. Hopefully your friend likes the happy mail. Is it squishy happy mail like yarn? Could be a card maybe saying, I care about you, I love you. You're my best friend. Chain two and turn. I'll just pick up a different loop. So we are almost done this one because this is the bottom and we worked our way up. So the ends are opposite where I had found the loops over here. The loops will be slightly different on this side. Just as long as you're consistent things will look on purpose. So don't don't worry about it too much. Don't stress. Yarning is supposed to be fun. If it's stressing you out, do something else, right? This is kind of, you can pick this loop in the front. I don't know, I usually do this one because it's easy to find. But once you get to this one, this was a chain around the post. And this one was a double crochet right into it, so that's why they look slightly different. So I picked the front loop on that one. It's a yarn bowl that she has wanted but couldn't afford to get herself, and I found one for her. Aw, Jen, you're so sweet. I bet your friend is definitely going to love that mail. Package it up tightly so it doesn't break in the mail. <laughs> that would be so sad to get a broken yarn bowl. I think today is Friday. Thursday? I don't even know. No, today's Thursday. I don't know. I never know what day it is anymore. If it's Thursday, that means that tomorrow I might be able to do a video too, because Dad usually takes the kids away with him on Friday. We live very far out of town, so anytime there's a big trip to town. See you again sometime? Definitely, Jen. I'll be around. You'll be around. I agree, Tara. It is awesome. Good friends are nice to have. Today is Friday? Oh. Really? Oh, I know what it was. Usually Alice has art class on Fridays, but they were canceled this week. That's why I get all confused. <laughs> uh, okay, so I did my chain two. And this was the two single crochets in that window. And I also had that chain one just for space. So I'm going to skip the chain one and join it to the single crochet with a slip knot or slip, slip stitch, and then I cut it off. Whoops, there we go. Pull it all through, there we go. So he looks almost the same as this one, except for I have to weave in those tails. I don't know if you care to see how I weave in tails, but um, might as well show you. I get a needle, 
and it's a bigger needle it's not like a sewing needle necessarily I think it's called a darning needle get out of the way and you want to make sure that you are obviously not covering the design you don't want it to go over and you definitely want to go through fibers not just around the yarn I just sort of go through all the stitches comes out wherever it comes out don't pull it so tight that you're puckering your fabric right you want it to just still have the same stretch and if you go a few different directions supposed to keep it from coming out I've never had a problem but I'm not that old yet so maybe if I was 80 I would say 40 years this isn't gonna last I don't know and then I just cut it shorter and you have to do that for all the little tails However, because this is not a single crochet graph gun, there is not that many tails, which is exactly why I like it. That single crochet graph gun, I think I spent like an hour weaving in tails every 10 rows or something. <laughs> and I guess I could show it for you guys again. It had so many color changes. It was definitely not a beginner's graph gun, but that's kind of how I like to do things. I'm not a beginner. It may be my first graph gun, but I'm not a beginner. Let's just do the big hard one. And it was technically a copyrighted image, which at the point now I know that that would probably not be something that they are supposed to be selling. And therefore I would choose not to buy it because that's supporting bad things. But at the time it didn't occur to me. I figured if they're selling it, it must be legal. And I paid them lots of money for it. And it was Toy Story. So I'm sorry, Toy Story. I didn't know. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse of the law, and yet I think a lot of people are a little bit uh, unknowledgeable. But um, yeah, it's very surprising to me that that company is still in business. I won't name them because that's not cool. But they, I think one of these days Disney's is going to find them because they do a lot of their patterns, and you're not allowed to sell money based on someone else's trademarked material. So. They might have a problem someday, but for now they're still selling. And this tail's a bit short. Sometimes when my tails are too short, I don't know if you've ever done that, I have to weave through here and then put my yarn in because it's just not long enough. And I think there are little tools that you can get that kind of grab the yarn, but I just use fingers. Maybe when I'm 80 I'll get a tool. These are knotted tails, so it's not like they're really going to come undone. We just want them to be woven in anyways. And then I'll just cut them off again. Do not cut your project. Guess who's saying that from experience? Not over the, oh yeah, there it is. These are very old scissors. They don't work that well, but I have nicer ones in my bag somewhere. So there we go. Now I have two squares and I actually have a third sitting on my shelf or maybe a fourth because <laughs> I got some for the tutorial video. You see my yarn was a different thickness. So even though I use the same hook and these are both worsted weight yarns, my tension or possibly I'm pretty sure this purple is thinner than this purple, even though they're both worsted weight. So it's slightly smaller. But the stitch count is the same, which means that when you go to join them together, you can stretch that the lighter purple out a bit and it'll still join. And if it's really tight, it'll pull and pucker things. So you do want to try and keep the same tension in the same yarn. But I like to use up my scrap yarn, which means I'm going to have wonky tension probably. And my kids just like drag these things on the floor anyways. It's acrylic yarn. I do wash them in the machine. I use cold water and very light dry just to kind of take the edge off and then usually hang them to finish drying. My projects do get um, pilly because we do not treat these blankets like works of art. I have some that I do treat like works of art. 
This kind of stuff I don't because it's scrap yarn, it's acrylic yarn, and my kids are young and they just want to cuddle a blanket and make a blanket for it and pull on it and fight on it and tug of war and, you know, that's how the blanket is meant to be used in my house. Um, that's all I got. I think that I will, if today's Friday, that means tomorrow's Saturday, I might still be able to do another video tomorrow. And if you have preferences on what you would like to see, you can let me know. Otherwise, I do have a whole list of things that I do want to show. So it's not like I run out of things to show. And that is it for me today. Thank you for watching. Check out the rest of my videos. If you watch my videos and you want to watch those ads, technically I will be getting money now. It's been um, three days <laughs> of being monetized. And so far I've made $2 on ads. Woo -woo! So uh, yeah. That's pretty fun for me. My money is not obviously going to be relying on ad income from YouTube. But maybe someday it'll be a valid source of income. For now, it's more like just fun to see. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Rosalind and Jen and Tara. And was that it who commented or did I miss someone at the beginning? No, I think that was it. So thanks. Thanks for coming and I'll see you guys later. Am I sure? Oh, see, now it asks me, are you sure you want to stop streaming? I am sure, but my clasp doesn't let me hit okay.